Recently, I watched season one of the Halo TV series. While I wondered why they put the whole thing out for free on YouTube, this franchise holds a very special place in my mind. Naturally, I took a look at all nine episodes, and they're not good. And no, I'm not saying that for superficial reasons or some game's purism thing. The show has a few bright spots here and there, but the last four episodes crashed the ship with no survivors. Let's dig in and see what's going on. Episode 1 opens on Madrigal in 2552, but it's an outer colony that's still functioning? Okay, silver timeline, I guess. A bunch of random people explain that the Spartans are ruthless killers. We meet Jin Ha, the commanding general of the people there. He's looking for his daughter. Quan and her friends are searching for some magic mushrooms, but there's something in the distance. It's a Covenant ship. Some of the expendables spill spaghetti sauce, so Quan shoots off a flare that alerts her settlement. As the humans prepare for battle, Quan leads the civilians into a hall where they'll all spill strawberry jam later. The elites knock down the front door and start blowing everything up. While this scene does an okay job of establishing a dark tone, I'm not sure why the humans can't bring down at least one of the aliens. You'll see what I mean in a moment. Hey, the Master Chief is here, let's get cooking. He empties a magazine into an elite and kills it immediately. The show should portray Spartans as complete badasses, but they shouldn't be the only ones who can fight. Kai, Vanek, and Riz drop into the battle as well. What's with the delay? Who knows? On the plus side, though, the rest of the Spartans get some genuine hero moments, such as when Kai saves Quan's life. Unfortunately, the Spartans can't save Jin from an elite's energy sword. After the opening credits, Silver Team advances to the Covenant landing site. Chief? Covenant Phantom. You're just spotting that now? The Master Chief and Kai move into a cave that doesn't appear to be a meme. They come across an unknown object, so Chief decides to touch it for reasons. Oh, by the way, there's an elite there too. The Chief gets a flash from his childhood, and the Elite makes a break for it. The creature knocks out Quan as he escapes, so 117 orders the Spartans to head back to Reach on the Phantom. Speaking of Reach, it's time to meet Dr. Halsey. She reviews John's helmet cam, only to be interrupted by Admiral Perengoski. They discuss what already happened, but then we hear this. We've been fighting these alien creatures for years and we still have no idea what they want. Why? No, seriously, their genocidal activities should be a clue. Also, Miranda Keys is going to talk to Quan, and Halsey is working on something that might be illegal? It's a clone. Huh. On High Charity, the Prophet of Mercy meets with a Blessed One and, wait, why is the Covenant working with a human? Quan wakes up on the Chief's ship and takes a call from Miranda. I'm not sure why the writers decided to turn a warship commander into a PR representative, but whatever. Miranda wants Quan to say something to the other colonies about the Covenant's brutality. However, Quan just makes up a story about how the Spartans killed everyone. And the tone just flew out the window. Halsey and her creepy assistant figure out that John biologically responded to the artifact. The doctor contacts the chief and the Spartan explains what he saw. The assistant is visibly disturbed by this, but Halsey keeps as calm as can be. After John gets a simple checkup, we cut to Sergeant Johnson. Wait, that's Captain Keys? I guess that explains Miranda's new look. At the very least, we get some nice father-daughter time with a side of murder. What's the point in saving humanity if we're gonna give up our own? Okay, we're back with the Chief and Quan, so it's time for some words. What is it you like? Nuts. Bolts. Microchips. That was a joke. Yeah, no. The chief of the games is nowhere near this awkward. By the way, he killed Quan's mom. When the chief receives a kill order for Quan, he ignores it. After Perengoski fails to knock him out remotely, the rest of Silver Team assembles to go after him. Halsey orders them to keep John safe instead. Quan threatens the chief, so he removes his helmet. 
Apparently, our hero wants to stop Quan's impending execution, and he doesn't know why. The pair get control of the ship, Kesey impedes it, and John uses the artifact to power the ship and escape. Episode 2 starts off in the barracks 22 years ago. A Spartan named Soren wants to escape, but John stops him. Until he doesn't. In the present, John is taking Quan somewhere. Meanwhile, Halsey meets with Admiral Hood. She has an insurance policy, but we'll get to that later. Down in the Ops Center, Silver Team wonders where their leader has gone. Little do they know that he's piloting through an asteroid field to a settlement. Oh, it's Soren's anarchist fun time place. We learn that there's a bounty on Quan's head, however, that's not very important now. Soren has a wife and son. On High Charity, the Blessed One interviews an elite. They identify the artifact as a keystone, so the Blessed One embarks on a retrieval mission. Back on Reach, the UNSC committee talks about fuel prices and the Master Chief. Admiral Hood doesn't want to punish our hero, so Halsey presents her contingency plan. She wants to effectively replace John's brain with Cortana. Okay, so she's evil. On Madrigal, Governor Venture executes all of the rebels while twirling his mustache. Also, John can't taste anything? Why would the UNSC do that when we know that taste is used for our survival? Apparently, the Peloton is back as the cause of it. The Spartans figure out where John is, but we have to listen to Miranda's whining about money. All of our advances in shielding, active camo, even slip space navigation derived from my, my research. Really? All of that? Even the Sangheili language? That's awfully suish of you, Miranda. Soren can't activate the artifact for some reason, but he knows a guy who got captured by the Covenant. That guy can't do anything either. Great, John is a chosen one, isn't he? One of the most important points of the original games is that all of humanity has that ability, so why change it? Never you mind, Halo is a weapon. The Chief leaves Quan behind and travels back to his team. He's arrested and has to talk to Halsey. The Doctor steers John toward what happened to Quan, and we also get some tasteful nudity? Halsey awakens her clone, but that's it for this one. Oh look, it's Oban. Apparently, the UNSC is making people sift through garbage? There's a young girl and boy there who are reading stories. They kiss for some reason, but their overseers catch and beat the boy to death. Why? Who knows, the Covenant are here. For the girl? Oh right, McKee's the Blessed One and she wants to kill John. Go figure. Over on Reach, Perengoski tells Miranda to figure out what she can about the artifact. Meanwhile, Halsey is working on her clone. Baldy seems oddly chipper for someone who is about to die, but we ultimately get a recap of what we already know. Later, Halsey and Assistant Creep extract the clone's brain juices, melt the body down, and inject John's brain. Hello, Dr. Halsey. Oh, it's Jen Taylor. Huh. Over on the asteroid, Soren gets some chickens, but Quan wants to go back to Madrigal. Yeah, there's not much to it. The Master Chief meets Cortana for the first time. He doesn't like it for some reason. Out in space, the crew of the Gladius comes across an abandoned Covenant ship. They receive a distress call from McKee, who has some hunters with her. Never you mind, though, John has to touch the artifact. He sees his mom, a dog, and a strange cave. Cortana puts him in stasis, which deactivates the device and ends the experiment. Back on the Gladius, McKee enters the ship and makes up a story. All of the sudden, the hunter worms overwhelm the crew. The commander activates the coal protocol, so McKee gives him the finger. Back on Reach, John talks to his team, only to be interrupted by Cortana. AI off. I'm introducing myself to the rest of the team. Go disappear! The chief seems really out of character. Kai's concerned about that. After a scene with Quan that means nothing, Cortana helps John search the internet for details about his visions. He remembers that he lost Nora 098 on a planet and can't feel anything. Therefore, he gets naked and cuts the regulator pellet out of his lower back. Like I've been trying to tell you, Master Chief. I'm here for you. Kai's jelly of Chief's AI waifu. 
That should be a little concerning. John starts to notice people and things as he roams around the city. If nothing else, this bit is actually pretty good because it illustrates what he's fighting for. John heads back and touches the artifact once more. It turns out that he saw a much larger device when he was a boy, but his dad didn't like that. The chief is from Aradanus too. Although he gets a primer on the planet, we learn that a virus wiped out the local population. He wants to go there himself, and Halsey joins him. Quan tries to wire a ship. Soren catches her, but gets suckered by the possibility of a big payday. McKee rewires the Gladius. She doesn't find anything in the database, so she tells her alien friends that they're going back to Madrigal. The UNSC intercepts that transmission. I wonder if it's going to be decoded when it's just barely too late. Everyone leaves for their missions as Halsey remarks about how she'll control John. Way back when, John seems to want to run away, but Halsey butters him up. Of all the young Spartans, I believe that you have the skills and the natural ability to be their leader. In the present, Master Chief looks at Slipspace. Meanwhile, Halsey and her assistant figure out that there must be some kind of intelligence behind the artifacts. Oh, the Chief is anxious about going home, too. That makes sense. Over on Madrigal, Quan and Soren talk for a bit about the Spartans' memory problems. Yeah, that's about it. Back on Reach, Kai's weirded out about how Riz just stares at her while she's naked. She cut out a regulator pellet, too. The Master Chief, Halsey, and What's-His-Face look around the forest and find the Chief's old house. They need to dig for John's old drawings. Quan and Soren look through the city and learn about a memorial for Jin. Soren draws Quan's attention to the bounty on her head. At the same time, Kai cleans her sniper rifle and gets the bright idea to put gun grease in her hair. A little bit later, Miranda tests the other Spartans to see if they can use the artifact. She starts with Riz. Down on Aratinus 2, John uncovers his drawings and doesn't recognize a ring. Hmm. I wonder what that could be. John figures that he has to go into his house. There's a candlelight vigil for Jin on Madrigal. Quan moves through the crowd to a general, but no one wants to fight because of their fear of the Covenant. That makes sense, but Quan throws a hissy fit and Venture's goons show up. Yeah, none of the other Spartans can activate the artifact. In the chief's house, Cortana helps to reassemble what the place used to look like. Suddenly, the chief remembers some positive moments from his old life, which is nice. Then, we see that he touched the larger artifact at some point as a child. He also finds out that Halsey met him in the house, so the cover story is a lie. In the labs, Miranda remarks that John is unique for some reason, but Kai has a better idea. Oh, I guess it could just mean... shit. Please don't kill me. If nothing else, I heart Kai. She's sweet and a psycho. Soren's ship is getting ripped to shreds. He stays with Quan because he won't get paid otherwise, and this storyline is a waste of time. I guess we have to look at Bern Gorman in the nude while he asks another woman named Franca, or is it Franco, to kill Quan. Miranda wonders why she and the Spartans never did Covenant language work until now. We also get a cute little story about how Halsey engaged in pet murder. As John wonders why Halsey was at his house, Quan discovers that her father spent all of the family's money. Her aunt tells her that Jin visited a group of mystics, which is what set him on his path. Oh, the assassin is here! Aw, Soren stopped her! Forget about the motorcycle chase, though, we have to get back to the lab. The Covenant are actually talking about Halo. Yeah, we know. Halsey doesn't really like humans for some reason, not even her own daughter if Miranda's monologue is anything to go by. Oh, that's it? I guess we need a cliffhanger. In the past, John saves another boy from falling off of a rope bridge. Keys and Halsey are there to see it, but we have to get back to the present. Remember when I said that Keys looks like he could actually be Sergeant Johnson? This is why. Did the writers composite the two characters? Halsey and Cortana think that the Chief should stay away from the artifact because EMP. Oh, Sorn and Quan's motorcycle broke down? Skip, 
Silver Team makes some plans to get the artifact off the planet. There's also this. Shoving in a red versus blue nod, are we show? Well, Kai is adorable enough to do that, so why not? Supposedly, the chief is annoyed that Kai is like him now. He grounds her for reasons. There is one funny bit between our hero and Cortana, though. Can't hear myself think. Well, I can, and you're not missing much. Back at the first dig site, McKean and Elite look around for the artifact's signature. Quan is still cuffed to the motorcycle. Skip. At the current dig, Keys BSs the chief about his concerns. Perrin Goski threatens to cut Halsey off, but the doctor turns it around with some blackmail. Keys wants his daughter taken off of the project as well. When the assistant hits the larger artifact with a laser, it unleashes a screech that leaves the humans in shock. Also, McKee can pick it up. How? Ow. Oh. oh, the artifact blows itself out of the rock? That's convenient. Of course, Miranda doesn't take the news that she's off the project very well. Never mind that, though. The chief discovers that there are no records of his old life, so he touches the artifact again. At that point, he learns that Halsey kidnapped him. He's mad enough to try and kill her, however, Cortana stops him. I wonder if our hero will screw everything up again. Quan tases Soren when he comes back. Okay. The Covenant show up on Iridanus and absolutely decimate the outpost. The Spartans have to get the artifact out, so the Chief reverses his stance on Kai. I will say that the battle is very well done. It shows the horror of the war, especially when Kai goes into shock. With that said, the Chief gets a moment of awesome when he jumps on a banshee and steers it right into a phantom. Isn't that cool? It's so cool. Okay, make that too. He has to save Kai and does so by beating an elite to death with his fists. A brute takes the artifact and escapes. McKee gets back to the humans by dropping down in a Covenant pod. That seems a little too convenient. In the medical bay, Kai is in unimaginable pain. Kate Kennedy sells it quite well, but we have to focus on the obvious Covenant spy. When the Force makes it back to Reach, the Chief tries to murder Halsey. Again. Oh, but he saves her at the last moment. That'll definitely work out at the court-martial. Although Natasha McElhoun gives a great performance, this is incredibly stupid. After the title, McKee gets a checkup. Some of the committee members believe that she's an enemy combatant or a refugee, yet she can also offer intel? Wait, McKean knows about the Keystones? Why would a refugee know about that? John doesn't believe her, so McKee tells him about the Asparrow star system and their shared abilities. For some reason, that rattles him. Oh, the JAG office is talking to Dr. Halsey? The chief interrupts the interrogation and asks Halsey why she kidnapped the Spartans, among other things. The chief visits Kai in the medical bay and they have a heart-to-heart -heart about Halsey's lies. That's nice. Perrin Goski throws Halsey under the bus because she admitted everything. It's only a demotion, but the show makes it seem like a dramatic moment. Miranda takes McKee's blood while mentioning the worm killings. Our spy acts way too nonchalant about it, which should be another red flag. Or just awkward acting? The Master Chief is fine, but the UNSC assumes that there's nothing in the Asparrow system. Okay, so they should be suspicious of McKee, right? Yeah, that's not happening yet. We have to see the Spartan laser. Miranda gets a note from Halsey. What for? Saving humanity at the cost of your own. It turns out that this was just a ruse to get Miranda's iris print. And yes, we have to get a recap of what we've already seen. McKee tells the chief that he has to open himself up to the Keystones, but it's an obvious attempt to get to the one that's under the UNSC's control. Miranda certainly sees it that way, but she helps John because she's nice like that. McKee throws a hissy fit, only to get stopped when John activates the artifact. Does it have Wi-Fi? Who knows? 
As for the chief, he envisions standing on Halo. McKee is there as well, so I guess the internet does work over the air. Also, John might be into McKee now. Let's just throw that in there. Two years ago, the Madrigal Resistance eats, yeah, I'm gonna have to stop this right here. This entire episode is confusing and pointless. How did Soren inexplicably get back to his asteroid? Who knows? Who is this random guy in 70s dress? Why bother? What's with the female mystics? Who cares? Oh, some people have been guarding a well? Woo. Soren shows up on Madrigal rather quickly. That means that we need a gun battle where Venture dies. Well, that storyline was useless. I guess that we have to get all tour shots of rings before John takes McKee out for ice cream. Why is he letting a suspected spy get a look at Reach's infrastructure? Oh, you're about to find out. At the very least, the UNSC sent MPs to tail them so they aren't brain dead. McKee tells John of the Great Journey. That should be another red flag, but John might be thirsty for Tomboy. By the way, the Covenant Glass Diterion. Why isn't that the focus of this episode? John wants Perengoski and Keys to let McKee activate the artifact. Chief, people don't just manually override decades of indoctrination. I did. Wait, they're going for it? Why? Never you mind, Riz and Vanek are wondering about Kai. Meanwhile, Our Lady of Thick Spartan Booty is hoisting a tankard of some kind. And then, she pulls a warthog into the air. Sure, she's kind of cheating because pulleys, but it's still cool. In the lab, Miranda attempts to decode the transmission that was obviously sent by McKee. At the very least, father and daughter have a decent relationship. That's something. But wait, there's more. You trust me. And I trust you. What? John hands McKee a copy of the book that she once carried, so they kiss? What is going on here? I'm too afraid to ask at this point. Wait, Cortana's watching that? Oh. Oh no. <laughs> Apparently, John must be really good because McKee tears her finger dagger out. You'd think that she would have broken some bones because Spartan, but whatever. Keys is angry at Halsey because she acts like a turbo freak instead of a normal human being. Nothing really comes of it, and Halsey hacks into McKee's room. I love humanity. But humans are the problem. That doesn't make any sense. For some reason, Halsey wants McKee and the Master Chief to control Halo with her help. McKee is understandably creeped out by this. Halsey invokes Zed Protocol to get her hands on the artifact, but Kai objects and... She should be dead, shouldn't she? Miranda discovers a brick in the recording just as McKee and John head for Okai is tied up? Nice. Meanwhile, Cortana actually helps the Chief. Unfortunately, the comms are totally down, so no one can talk to anyone else. How convenient. Vanek and Riz fight John. Somehow, the Chief is able to take a punch to the chest from an exoskeleton without dying. Why? Ow. Two more shots to disable Vanek's shields. Wait, they don't recharge all of a sudden? Luckily, Kai intervenes. Miranda catches McKee before she can do anything, but the shock from a guard turns the tomboy to the dark side again. McKee activates the thing and it knocks everyone over because plot. In the season finale, the Master Chief wakes up and we learn that McKee took the artifact. Riz and Vanek hold Kai at gunpoint, so the Chief tells them about Halsey's deeds. They don't want to believe it, but Keys confirms it. That calms the Spartans down and pushes them to stop Halsey and McKee. McKee escapes, but her phantom is shot down by the fighters that are swarming the skies. Wait, that's not happening? Why not? Kai jumps onto Halsey's ship. She's enraged at the doctor's lies and... He's going to regret that. Kai kills the assistant, which gives Halsey time to escape, for some reason. Therefore, our Spartan tries to get control of the ship, but it winds up crashing. Somehow, she jumped out and clung to the ledge? How did that happen? After the titles, John brings up the Aspero system once again. They can't actually see anything because of a kaleidoscopic effect, so John volunteers Silver Team. 
At the very least, John and Keyes are able to patch things up a bit. That's nice. Meanwhile, Dr. Halsey runs away from her crash site. The MPs catch her before she can get very far, though. At the Covenant Temple, McKee delivers the artifact. The Prophets affirm her place in the Great Journey. The Chief and Cortana talk about Halsey's plot. Cortana doesn't want to take away John's humanity, but they're quickly interrupted by some gravity problems. Sure, it looks neat. On the other hand, they're not gonna die here. Let's move ahead a bit. There's a star system here. However, we have to go back to Reach. Miranda appears to be delighted that her mom was sentenced to death for treason. That seems wildly out of character for her. By the way, why are the prophets talking about McKee? Oh, that makes sense. Silver Team jumps out of their ship to the dirt. No one will remember you. Uh, okay. Halsey is dying of a seizure disorder, eh? She's a clone. When did the switch happen? The artifacts are joined, but the Covenant know that the Spartans are there. They're ambushed by hundreds of elites and a number of brutes. John pushes Riz out of the way of one brute, only to be beaten up by the giant alien. Therefore, McKee activates the artifact, and it blows most of the elites off of the mountain? John tries to stop McKee as his teammates come under fire. However, this problem can only be fixed with a bullet. I guess that the Spartans can survive sticky grenades too? Ugh. John is backed into a corner, so he gets the bright idea to save everyone by dying. This is supremely stupid, even by the standards of soft sci-fi. The only real way to erase a person is through the death of the brain. What would possess the writers to make up this garbage? Oh wait, Cortana can pilot the ship and deliver close air support too? Why didn't she just do that? Not Chief gets the bright idea to burn Riz's exposed organs. Did the writers forget about biofoam? Who knows, Halsey has to monologue about evolution for reasons. John is as speechless as I am. I'm not sure how this season got past Steven Spielberg's desk. While the writers definitely looked at the books in this saga, they stuffed these nine episodes with far too many conveniences and stupid moments. Sure, Kate Kennedy, Natasha McElhone, and Danny Sapani kinda elevate the material. With that said, this show cannot be taken seriously in any meaningful way, and that's a true shame. Thanks for watching. If you like that and you want to see more, be sure to check out the playlist here and some choice reviews over here. And of course, be sure to like, comment, share, and subscribe. Oh, and check out the links in the description too. Keep your head up, and I'll see you next time.